All right, look, I don't want any of you keyboard warriors in the comments calling me a bad person because of this story, all right? Most of you would have done the exact same thing in my position because the truth is, money changes you. Everyone has a price. I just wish mine was a little higher. So you know how it's a part of American culture that kids in America get a job when they turn 16? Well, I'm a first generation American, meaning my parents were never kids in America. So when I went to my dad when I was 16 and asked him if I could get a job, he was like, Job? The fuck are you talking about? Have you gone to medical school? You don't even have PhD yet. Who will hire an engineer who's not graduated 10th grade? Because in his mind, school was more important than anything else. It makes sense because that's how he was raised and his academics is how we made it here in the first place. But still, I was very jealous when my friends started working because now they were making money and I wasn't. And I really didn't want to be the broke friend. Every friend group has the broke one and it wasn't going to be me because I was already the foreign one. I didn't want to be the broke and foreign one. So what do you do when you need money but you can't get a job? You turn to the internet. So I Google searched how to earn money online, which by the way, it's not how any successful business starts. Like I've never heard a success story start with an article titled 10 quick ways to get rich because that's what you get when you Google search how to earn money online. You get clickbait and scammy courses and bald people. So I'm going through these posts and I'm crossing idea off one by one because they all require capital that I didn't have until eventually I find this one post on Reddit titled Broke to Rich, The Guide to Dropshipping. And I was like, the fuck is dropshipping? Dropshipping is what you do when you think you're a pit bull entrepreneur, but you're actually a broke ass weasel. First pick a niche like, I don't know, sweaters for puppies, and then type it into some Chinese mass manufacturing site like AliExpress. Find cool shit, download the images, and then create listings of them on your own sweater puppy e-commerce website. Double the price of every item for pretending to be an American-based company. Now, whenever a customer orders an item from you, you actually just go to the Chinese site and order it as a customer, but you set your address as the address of the customer who ordered it from your website. The Chinese site ships it to your customer, you profit the markup, Nobody is the wiser. I thought it was brilliant. And to be fair, on paper, it kind of is. But what the guide failed to mention, setting all that shit up is the easy part. Getting actual customers is a completely separate ball game. So now I'm completely on my own to get customers for my new website, Raptopia, the utopia of rap lovers. My idea was to create an Instagram page and grow a following and then advertise because I knew you shouldn't be advertising right from the jump. So I made an Instagram page and I was posting original content. Like I was posting daily rap facts and verse of the weeks. And eventually I got 2,500 followers. So I thought that it was time to start advertising. I was doing all the fake guru, you know, the scammy tactics. Like I, uh, I had this sale or promotion that I was ending soon but it never actually ended and I was also doing this other thing where I was selling stuff that were free just pay shipping but then the price of the shipping would be like 15 bucks despite all these scammy tactics I was trying I wasn't really making any sales because I didn't have a big enough following but then one day it hit me technically I don't need a big following to promote my rap website I just need someone with a big following to agree to promote it for me Basically, I invented sponsorships, you know, like on YouTube, except on YouTube for like 100,000 views, you know, you charge about $2,000. I found a Tupac page with 150,000 followers and offered them one free sweater. Nowadays, people would just be like, go fuck yourself. But back then, I guess people just didn't know their worth. In her mind, she was probably like, all I have to do is make an Instagram post and I get a free sweater. Fuck yeah. So I ordered the sweater to her address and I waited about two months. And then one day I wake up and I have a notification on Instagram that I was tagged in a post. So I click on it and sure enough, the ad went live. So I walk over to my computer and I swear the second I opened my email, my heart rate must have shot up 20 beats per minute. It was like I just did a line of the purest cocaine straight from the streets of Colombia. Like I saw sales, I saw a lot of them. But the second thing that this guide failed to mention is that you can't just pretend to be an American based company, but actually order all your things from China because there's this thing called shipping times and this other thing called angry customers, which I didn't know how to deal with. Like, what do you do if a customer demands a refund from you? Uh, no thanks. To this day, I still don't know what the proper response is, but I do know that it is not whatever I ended up doing. Here is a real example of an email conversation I had with one customer. Good evening. 
When will I be receiving my clothes? It has been longer than two weeks. Sorry for the inconvenience. Your shipment has been processed and set out for delivery. You should be receiving the package within the next two weeks. Thank you. And then eight days go by. May I please know the status of my clothing as it is a gift and it has taken well over a month. Oh shit. At this point, I'm beginning to detect a little hostility and I know where this is going. I know he's about to ask for a refund and I know I'm not gonna give him one. I start playing this game that I like to call email chess. We are sorry to hear this. Our shipping options are very limited in your country. You should be receiving the package any day now. If the package does not arrive within the next two weeks, we can offer a full refund. Did you catch it? All the mind games that I was playing? Because I'm willing to bet that it went right over your head. Here's what this email was essentially really saying. We are sorry to hear this. Yes, we are so sorry. My team and I have no idea how this happened. I'm going to have to speak to our shipping department. Wait till HR hears about this. The CEO, as well as the rest of our massive, massive company are so sorry. Like running such a large company with such a big American legal department is really hard because really that's what we are big massive company and not just a 17 year old who you paid so he could order you a sweater from china our shipping options are very limited in your country this has got to be my favorite line in the whole email exchange because essentially i just found some way to shift all the blame onto the customer like i noticed that he lived in dubai and basically i was like maybe you're the problem huh did you think about that one if you wanted to order things on the internet Maybe you shouldn't have lived there, selfish prick. Our shipping options are very limited in your country. If the package does not arrive within the next two weeks, we can offer a full refund. Just the most absurd time window, yet still pretending to be the good guy. Like, hey, I know you ordered this in April and it's currently June, but let's see how July goes, huh? I know this is a gift for your son's 15th birthday, but maybe it'd be better as a Christmas present or graduation gift. But hey, if it doesn't arrive by the time your son graduates college, we'll give you a full refund. Because really, we're the good guys here. We really care here at Raptopia. We have amazing customer service. You should be thanking us. I mean, really, you should be stoked. We're doing you a favor here. If it doesn't arrive within the next two weeks, we can offer a full refund. So I sent that email feeling like fucking Magnus Carlsen, but it turns out that our friend from Dubai is a pretty high elo email chess player too. So first he responds, I would like a full refund immediately, please. It's just absurd. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I don't give a fuck. So I just ignored that email. But then three more days go by and he sends this. Excuse me, I have not received my refund. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a match on our hands. Did you see what he did there? He is no longer asking me for a refund. He's already assumed that I'm gonna give him one and his new complaint is that it's not transferring fast enough. Like he's trapping me into a corner where I now have to apologize for the refund taking too long. Like the only valid response here is like, uh, sorry sir, refunds take five to eight business days. Because really, what else can I respond? Excuse me sir, I have not received my refund. Good, I didn't send you one. Like no, nobody wants to respond to a customer complaint by informing them that their situation is actually worse than what they're complaining about. Like imagine you're at a restaurant complaining to a waiter like, excuse me, why does my steak look well done? I ordered medium rare. Hmm, actually that's a frozen meatball from Kmart. Like I know you guys are probably thinking that I'm reading too deep into this email, but I'm not, I know what he's doing. So at this point I'm like, oh, you don't play games? Well, let the games begin. So then, <laughs> I added a terms of service page to my website. You know like that long thing that nobody reads but everyone agrees to? I added one of those to my website and it included a section for return policies. And my return policy clearly stated, we only issue refunds requested within the first 48 hours of purchase. And then I sent him this checkmate of an email. Unfortunately, we cannot offer a refund for your circumstances. Check our return policy for more info and then I linked in the return policy that I had literally just created seconds before sending it. Great customer service, I know. Hard to believe that Raptopia didn't take over Amazon. In the end, I didn't issue a single refund. I just ignored all other emails and eventually I took my website down because I thought that that meant they couldn't sue me. So overall, I walk away with like 600 bucks from six months of work, which is less than what you earn at McDonald's. And I was sort of in the same scenario. I was 17, I was kind of broke, I didn't have a job. Except now I also had enemies in Dubai. So moral of the story, if your kid wants to get a job, 
You should let them because otherwise they might start causing conflicts with the Middle East. And also, if you ever decide to make a business of some sort, make sure you're providing value. Make sure you're actually solving some problem and you're not just doing one of these fucking weasel ass businesses like I tried to do. Thanks for watching that video. But now, let's talk about a big problem in the tech industry. The lack of accessibility from marginalized communities. Did you know that most public schools in America don't offer computer science classes? Which is so tragic, especially because I know coding can change so many lives the way it changed mine. Like, I would have never had the opportunities to leave Hawaii and get internships, travel the world, and make YouTube videos if it wasn't for my fascination with Android development when I was 12. But here's the good news. You can help. Tech Domains and Namecheap have agreed to donate 100% of their proceeds to Code.org, who are devoted to changing this. Now is the time to get yourself a .tech domain, since there are so many rare domains still available for grabs. Plus, .tech domains just look cool and futuristic. So if you believe that everyone should have a chance to go and follow their passions in tech, visit go.tech slash black or click the link in the description below to do your part and make a difference. Thank you.